Hi, Tyler from Interfidelity here. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting headphone. This is the One More Triple Driver Over Ear Headphone. It's the name of it. Um, we'll get to the triple drivers in a minute. Um, it's a fairly stylish uh, looking headphone. Um, build quality is quite good actually at this price. This is a $249 headphone. Um, the uh, headband pad and the ear pads are a nice quality uh, protein leather. Um, there is a nice soft cushioning underneath the head pad. There's dimples on this to help distribute the weight over the top of your head. I did find that it did a pretty good job of that. Um, the cups turn uh, and tilt nicely uh, and easily with uh, good movement, no creaks or squeaks. The ear pads are a little small and so they're kind of as much an on-ear headphone as they are an over-ear headphone, um, but they're very soft and very um, uh, plush feeling and I, I found them quite comfortable you know, even for long listening sessions, so that, that didn't bother me too much. Um, the uh, ear pads also fold in um, so that it can be stored in its case. Uh, the uh, construction of the hinges is metal uh, mostly. There is a uh, stainless steel um, band in the arch and stainless steel uh, extenders for uh, adjustment. The the um, swivel mechanisms and yoke are aluminum. The capsule housing itself is aluminum. Uh, there, they call it a rim on the back here, and there's a, a cover glass, which I think is actually some a plastic or Lexan or something. Um, yeah, these are not metal, but they're very nicely done, very nicely finished. Um, it, maybe it's metal. No, I don't think so. They said polycarbonate, I, I, I recall. Um, the uh, cable is about four feet long. It's terminated in a 3.5 millimeter uh, TRS plug. It does come with uh, an adapter to a quarter inch. Um, it is a, uh, a braided cover. There's a Kevlar reinforcing core in there. Um, and it's OFC, the, the Ear uh, pads are connected using a 2.5 millimeter plug. I generally don't like 2.5 millimeter plugs, but there is a well into which they go, so it does a great job of uh, holding the connector firmly and reducing the strain on the plug if you if you give a tug on the cable. So that's all all well and good. It also comes with a. Um, Case for it to fit into, and it fits nicely into the into the case. There's the uh, um, quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter. It also has a bag, so it comes with a bag and a case. I think manufacturers should take a clue there. Really, headphones should come with some kind of a traveling case. I think pretty much all the time. Uh, so on to the triple drivers. There are three drivers in this headphone. The main driver is a 40 millimeter graphene over mylar driver. Uh, it's a fixed edge driver. It looks kind of like a regular um, uh, headphone driver except it has this graphene coating on it. We'll get back to that in a second. In front of the main driver is a small ceramic plate piezoelectric driver uh, uh, for high frequencies and behind the driver you can actually see in the in behind the rim here under the cover glass there's what amounts to kind of a passive radiator in there it's not electrically connected it just moves with uh, uh, the energy from the main driver um, it's not a passive radiator in the normal sense though because it is within the sealed enclosure it doesn't expose itself to the outside world um, uh, I'll, I'll mention briefly the the thing about the graphene is that uh, graphene is a one atom thick film that is a crystal structure of carbon and it is actually the most, uh, the strongest material um, discovered by man uh, to date. Uh, it's an extremely 
stiff and strong material, something like 400 times stronger than uh, steel. Uh, so, um, and so even a thin layer of this stuff is extremely stiff uh, um, for its size. Uh, and that's good because it uh, allows the um, whole cone of the driver to move right along with the voice coil. It doesn't lag behind it due to the elasticity. <clears throat> so light and stiff um, driver. I did talk to one of the engineers there or, or uh, uh, communicated with one of the engineers via email and uh, they said that the um, the graphene film is attached, adhered to the driver mylar material prior to the mylar being stamped to form its shape uh, into the driver and that the graphene does not cover the entire surface of the driver. So um, the, cent the, the voice coil diameter is 20 millimeters of the 40 millimeters. So the voice, the central dome of the driver is fairly large. And I would guess, because you can't take these apart, it looks like the, the uh, pads are adhered on. I would guess that the, the graphene just covers the central dome part because otherwise if it covered the entire driver surface, it would make the driver too stiff for it to act as the suspension around the edges. So, um, so it's an interesting driver construction. Uh, if you want to read more about it, I, I went into great detail how this graphene material is actually really desirable, how there are some measurements that I saw from the Aura headphone, O-R-A, headphone that was on Kickstarter um, quite some time ago. <clears throat> uh, and um, what I found was my measurements of this he headphone showed things that were very similar to their measurements of that headphone uh, in that uh, the electrical phase and impedance was fairly steady over the entire uh, frequency response range because it wasn't reactive and, and pumping energy back out of phase. Um, to the driver uh, and um, the impulse response was very clean. De graphene is a self-damping material so the so the impulse response had very little noise on it. So it, it does appear that this um, graphene material um, is A, doing something in these headphones and doing something characteristic and that graphene it does appear to be a really nice material for headphone drivers. Uh, on to the sound quality. The sound quality of these headphones is um, uh, freaking great, but for one sort of oddity, but but really good. The mid-range and the treble are, are tuned very nicely um, and quite neutral uh, and very, very articulate. Um, not bright, not strident, but absolutely, you know, crisp on the money. I... I uh, and I hate to use the word crisp because so often it's used for a headphone that's bright, too bright. Um, but the the articulation is absolutely superb on this headphone. The dynamics are are really nice in the mid range and treble. Um, in that it's it's not overly punchy. It just does exactly what the music wants it to do, both on a macro and micro dynamic level. Very very. Uh, um, good portrayal of, of you know high and low level information simultaneously very very nice um, I didn't hear any weirdness um, apparently the crossover point is at 10k according to the engineers it does look like something is going on around 2k but it, it might be a different resonance of the of the graphene driver but um, the, the bottom line is is that they are extremely well integrated it's one of the few uh, two driver, uh, double driver headphones or multiple driver over your headphones that I've heard that I that I like. It really, they've done a great job of integrating the sound of those two drivers. But the bass reflector on the bottom end is is kind of weird. Um, uh, first of all, you've got this extra moving mass in there, and I and I think it is providing some additional visceral information. I think. Um, it, it's hard to tell. It's it, it's just a different kind of bass response than I've heard on a headphone. <coughs> it comes at the expense of of really good uh, texture and nuanced resolve. On, uh, unfortunately, um, 
I was listening uh, to Ray Brown, uh, 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 who plays an acoustic bass. It's an acoustic jazz trio. And as he uh, moves up and down the neck of the stand-up bass, when the notes are up in the higher registers, you can, you can hear them very clearly. It's very well resolved and nuanced. It sounds organic and like the natural instrument. And then when it gets to a certain uh, um, uh, point as it descends, and it's around 100 hertz according from what I can tell, um, it, all of a sudden it's like another electric bass um, comes in that makes it a little blurred out or something or blurry a little bit so it loses some of its resolve but at the same time you have this uh, sort of unusual impression and it's subtle but it's nice of the of the the weight of the sound and and um, I, I it's it's very hard to describe the bass is um, somewhat accentuated I wouldn't call it over accentuated uh, but it, it certainly has this unusual nature that can call attention to itself and and it can do so in a good way uh, in acoustic music you can pretty clearly hear this sort of loss loss of textural resolve but in in electronica and in, in uh, dance music and things like that um, this uh, this strong uh, visceral sense of the bass can be really fun. So I, you know, I think I, it's it's sort of a bass head headphone in the way in that it it, it um, has this uh, unusual and and somewhat pleasing character to the bass. Um, al although you you do lose a little punch in the in and a little resolve in the in the process. So it's it's kind of a um, unusual headphone in that regard. Uh, I would have loved to hear this headphone without the the uh, bass reflector in there, what they call the bass reflector, um, to see what it was like because I, th I think it could be really, really good. Uh, on the other hand, I, you know, it is a fun sound that it has, so uh, um, I, you know, I might in the end go, no, I'll go ahead and put it back in It's because it's fun. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, and the treble response <clears throat> and, and uh, upper mid-range and treble response is, is really, you know, not only is it tonally on, on the mark, and, uh, although it's a slightly warm tilted headphone, but not, not a lot, um, the, uh, the treble is just spectacularly clean and uh, apparent. It, it doesn't have the liquidity that some high-end headphones have this coherent liquid thing where everything is just tied together and, it, and, and the fact that it's being reproduced disappears and you just enter the music. It doesn't quite have that, um, uh, but it's not dry and it's, or anything like that. But but the resolve is so good. The um, in the frequency response measurements, there's almost no noise in the in the high frequency measurements, and so um, it does just a great job of of resolve. Um, imaging is good. Uh, it's it's not particularly deep, um, and it. it and it doesn't go high in the head it kind of stays horizontal in the head but it's got good width and good spec uh, specificity and and uh, very stable in in the in the various bits so it does a great job there the dynamics as i said are good both macro and micro dynamics so yeah this baby's going to hit the wall of fame hard it is a really really good sounding headphone with one little oddity in the bass but that oddity turns out to be kind of fun um i am i definitely recommend this for folks who enjoy uh a strong bass response um and i need to say that it's not overly strong it, it is um what i would call within the just within the realm of neutral <clears throat> um uh, but it does have that funny character to it. At any rate, it's a it's a it's a really a, a fun headphone to listen to, and and uh, I, uh, I I really would encourage you to get your ears uh, you know, underneath a pair of these um, sometime soon for a listen, if if only just to experience this graphene dual driver graphene ceramic tweeter that is tuned so nicely and and is so. 
um, wonderfully responsive and articulate. Uh, and then also to have that, that base experience, which is a little unusual and kind of fun. Um, so yeah, wall of fame bound, great headphone for the bass heads out there. Um, really, a, I think a solid headphone for everybody, as long as you, you like a little bass. Um, um, just a, a kind of an amazing headphone. I'm pretty stoked about these and uh, uh, I hope you get a chance to hear them. All right, we'll see you guys next time.